So Maureen O'Connell, welcome yeah. to the Actors Room. Thank oh, you thanks for coming in. Oh, and thank you for inviting me in. No I'm very worries. happy to be here. Brilliant. No <laughs> worries. For, thanks so much for coming in. So uh, we're just back from the IFI and your film Proclaim was on it. It was brilliant. Well oh, done. thank you. Yeah. Thanks a million. No, it was brilliant. You did so much. You did. You acted on it. You wrote it. You directed it. There were, you did so much. We'll talk yeah. more about it um, a little bit later sure. before we get into it. Um, I always ask people to tell me a little bit about their background and how they kind of got into acting. Yeah, okay. Um, well, how did I start? Uh, let me think. I think, well, it basically began when I lived in Wicklow down in the sticks. And um, so I was very bored and um, I started to make films with my dad's VHS camera. Oh, right. And I acted in them when I was like, uh, you know, did like fairy tales, shot fairy tales. And I was, I don't know, I was playing Snow White and whatever, all okay. those things. So I really enjoyed that. <laughs> and then um, I demanded to go to uh, some type of, you know, drama school when I was a kid. So I went to drama school when I was like 12 or something. Okay. What and was that? Was that, in, that was in Dublin, was it? Or was uh, yeah, we moved back to Dublin then. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I did speech and drama in, I think it was in Fox Rock yeah. with Pamela Hughes. And... Um, uh, she was great and we went to like, you know, feshes, mm-hmm. so just competitions and you do like monologue or a scene, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I I won a couple of prizes there or whatever. And um, then after that, I think the parents didn't want me to do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they never, do they never all, ever, so ever do. So, so <laughs> yeah. And uh, so then I did, I did apply to get into the Gaiety School of Acting and I was rejected twice mm-hmm. in a row. So that was really difficult. And then, so I went to uh, Bally Farmer College yeah. and I got a diploma in film production. Mm-hmm. And then while I was studying there, I did uh, loads of Amdram mm-hmm. and Profit Share. Yeah. So that when I eventually graduated with a film diploma, I uh, had an agent, an actor agent. Oh, so you were kind of doing it on the side then as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was always kind of doing both together. Okay. Uh, making films and acting. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then I did about, three years um professional acting work in dublin and mm-hmm. uh, where i did m- just mainly theater yeah uh, which is great i did like wuthering heights and trojan women and um the really importance of being cool earnest wins. Yeah. yeah 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 and do you find um theater really helps you now like throughout all your acting including screen work and stuff or yeah definitely um after i i finished those three three years i, I went to rada then in england mm-hmm. so i did uh, three years there then Wow. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think I, well, I personally think the best actors are the ones who are theatre actors and who are, um, well, you don't have to be necessarily trained. You don't have to be. But yeah. I think if you've been on the stage a lot, um, it helps both for film acting and obviously mm-hmm. for theatre acting as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. And you said you went to RADA. What was the training like in RADA? What did you, what did you think about them as a, as an... Yeah, as uh, brilliant very very yeah. thorough <laughs> and uh it's great to just be kind of acting for three years mm-hmm. um non-stop and um very intense uh you're not allowed to get away with anything really yeah yeah <laughs> it's really good because you're kind of held accountable then you exactly to, yeah. yeah 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 so um are you guys yeah. allowed to audition while you're in no no, no. um not when you're full-time it's uh no yeah that's um one of the things i think rad is like the only school in comparison like you know to the other ones that are there there's like lambda mm-hmm. uh there's um drama center yeah and a guild hall and all of them they do audition in third year yeah. i think sometimes even in second year they let their students out yeah. uh, but rada says uh, in third year you're not allowed to go out and audition until i think april or may of right. the third year mm-hmm. um yeah, so, I mean, I think in one way it's great because it mm-hmm. keeps you focused on the course. And then another way, lots of people missed opportunities because people came knocking and said, oh, I want to see this actor. And they weren't allowed to oh, audition. No. Yeah, yeah. I know. I suppose but, it's like there's obviously method in the madness, though. And I, I would mm. imagine then it's, you're so anxious to kind of get going, then you have a fire in your belly by the time That's you're it. done. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's good from their point of view. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'd yeah. probably agree with them if I was a teacher there. You, would. you wouldn't want anybody missing your classes. If you yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so then you were obviously over in the UK and then you came home. What? Yeah. Why did you decide to kind of come home as opposed to stay? Um, well, I've done a few plays and stuff in London mm-hmm. and um, a TV uh, gig as well. Um, mm-hmm. But I really wanted to then make films. Yeah. Because um, I was always writing all of the time. Mm-hmm. And 
it's very difficult to make films in London if you have no money. I know. Yeah. Um, so difficult. <laughs> It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, isn't it? It's so hard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's hard in Dublin, but it's much easier in Dublin in mm-hmm. comparison to London because, well, I think it's quite controversial, but I think <laughs> London, like, they have a proper film industry. Yeah. So all the talented people get sucked up into the industry and expect to be paid, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but in Dublin, like, I think we have, like, a film scene. Yeah. It's becoming kind of, they're trying to make it an industry, I think. But there's loads of talented people on the ground who are not working every yeah. day. They're not jobbing. But they want to do something. Yeah. So you're kind of like, well, do you want to work on this for free? Mm-hmm. And if they like the script, they say, yeah. So then you've got a really talented cinematographer working with you, you know? Yeah. Which yeah. you wouldn't get in London. No. Um, no, I, I would imagine not. And then you said you were working on a TV series. That was Doctors, was it? Was that the... uh, no, I did Doctors, but I, I did Father Brown. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So that, that was great. Yeah. And what's it yeah. like working on a television set, I suppose, uh, in comparison, obviously, to, say, a short film or a feature or something? Is there, yeah. um, I imagine, like, the turnover is insane. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Well, when I was doing Father Brown, uh, so we were doing my episode, but then they were also filming two other episodes yeah. at the same time. So when I came on set, I didn't even know this. And um, the lead actor, Mark Williams, because he's almost like a producer on it because mm-hmm. he's, you know, such a big actor and he kind of is in the whole thing. So he'd been doing these two other episodes and then he had to kind of get his head around coming into I my episode. Wow. But he was really annoyed because they were behind schedule and stuff. And and I, I remember kind of going, oh my God, everyone's everyone's in bad mood. <laughs> everyone's kind of, <laughs> you know, yeah. kind of freaking out a bit. Yeah. And um, I realised then I wasn't going to get any rehearsal whatsoever. I, I just had to hit my marks and just do it, you know. Oh, so scary. So, so scary. So it was not like anything I'd ever done before because anything I'd ever done before, you had some rehearsal and mm-hmm. some kind of mm-hmm. chats with the director yeah. and, you know. Um, but I was like, no, I don't want to, I don't annoy anyone. So I'm just going to get on with this yeah yeah exactly and um you had you met the actors before or or you have you no that was the first time that was the first time we met him on set and he was in a bad mood i was terrified (laughs) terrible (laughs) he's really nice though he's such a nice guy um and uh very earthy and actually Mm -hmm. very very helpful as well Mm -hmm. because an awful lot of time the director because he'd so many things he's juggling so many things he wasn't able to come over and 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 direct me so i'd have mark williams tell me this is probably the best way to kind of get from A to B and I'm like alright thank you thank you I just took it all because he was, he was totally right in any case you know yeah so uh, yeah it was brilliant so you doing, wow that sounds yeah. amazing and then you obviously came home so you decided listen I'm going to start writing Were you? did you go mm. to a writing class or how did you pick up writing or what were you doing um, well I, I kind of just done uh, you know like um, so I did film production in yeah. Bally Fermat so we had like a writing that was module in that yeah. yeah and so that's all I've ever done I've never gone to any writing classes per se okay. um I usually just write stuff and then I go I'm just gonna make it yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just I probably should have more filters and people kind of you know uh critiquing it and stuff like that but sometimes I find you know if you critique something it um, can sometimes make you a little bit um tentative then about making it yeah. and you wonder god you know maybe maybe that person's right or maybe this person's right and you by that stage you never make anything because mm-hmm you know um your first uh feeling about the thing has been kind of diluted by someone else's true idea of what yeah. it should mean or, and so so yeah so I just I mainly just write stuff and make it and mm-hmm. hope for the best really yeah. and when you're writing things are you writing them with um a character in mind for yourself that you're going to play or do yeah. you write as well with just maybe an idea that you might like to direct and not be in it or uh yeah I do both yeah, yeah. um so I um what's an idea so, so so I have like a screenplay about you know um actually two of them mm-hmm. that I do want to play the parts in and but then I have several screenplays I like feature ones yeah. that um I'm not in at all like you know it's okay. not uh, uh apart from me you know um with Proclaim my short film obviously yeah. I just I had auditioned people for the part of Nell Sullivan, which is my granny in the film. Mm-hmm. But I just thought, oh, it's my granny. I'm playing her. I'm playing her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's only a cameo in any case, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah, no, I do both. I don't okay. mainly yeah. write for myself or anything. And um, how do you feel? Like, do you have a particular love? Is acting your love or are you finding directing is kind of taking over a little bit? Um... I don't know. I'd really like to act now because I've just finished Proclaim and I was directing it and I was pulling it through post-production for ages. Yeah. Um, 
because sometimes when you're because I teach acting and film base as yeah. well so sometimes when you're teaching people you kind of go god god I wish I could I could just get up and do it now I just want to do it now myself I don't you know you're just yeah. kind of like I I'll just want to do it <laughs> yeah yeah this is how you do it guys. yeah exactly <laughs> just say it like this no I'm only joking but uh, <laughs> but uh yeah so I'm kind of feeling itchy feet just to mm-hmm. get back into you know playing a character yeah um but I really want to direct again and I would love to direct without me in it as well mm-hmm. you know I mean it's because then you can have your full focus on it. Cause it yeah. must be so stressful. Like if you're doing more than one role, yeah, they're big roles. I mean, yeah, you know, definitely. To write it and to produce and to direct, those yeah. they're they're really they're really big roles. Yeah, and, definitely. And require so much time individually. So yeah. Um, how did you find it when you were uh, starting off with Proclaim? You like what was the initial idea? Where did the, where did it come from? Sure. Um, well, I came home and I wanted to do something uh, for 1916. Yeah. So just back from London. So um, uh, my granny had been in Cumann mm-hmm. Uh Her name is Nell Sullivan. And um, she lived in Limerick. And she's mentioned actually in lots of history books, her and her brother, uh, yeah. Tom Sullivan. And um, so often my dad would be reading a random history book and he goes, oh, my mom, my mom is in the book again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just hilarious. But uh, so one of the things that she did was she used to transport ammunition and uh, they used to put she she made the bullets and then she also put them into potatoes. So shoved them into potatoes and then would transport the potatoes because she was a woman. They would just think, oh, she's just, you know, it's just a woman. Yeah, she's with some bullets. Like, exactly. <laughs> <She's cooking. laughs> yeah. So um, so I thought that was funny. And uh, I was I couldn't find any coming among story that was small enough to make, funnily enough. They're right. actually quite epic. Yeah, you know? they're big. Yeah. yeah, really big things. And so then I stumbled upon the story of the proclamation which I didn't know but mm-hmm. there's 29 mistakes on the proclamation there's an upside down E oh. uh, they couldn't make um, they couldn't print a capital E so they had to print a capital F and then kind of write underneath it you know oh, the E no, oh, really? or the the bottom part of the E uh, same with um, C's they had to make a you know a capital O and then break the O and make a C mm-hmm. so I thought this was hilarious and they yeah. had to do it in one night in yeah. 2000 copies and they didn't have enough of anything like enough paper enough type enough wax so they're under huge pressure and uh they had to get help from like um a british printer called west which mm-hmm. i just thought was so ironic and so irish and so ridiculous like, yeah. <laughs> but he was a sympathizer so um he helped them out but uh yeah so i just thought oh this is a great story and um they had they had to um, print in secret in Liberty Hall, but at the back of it. Mm-hmm. So they couldn't go through the front of Liberty Hall because mm-hmm. they were being watched. Mm-hmm. So they went through this baby clothes shop um, that was run by Countess Markovic and Helena Maloney. And at one stage, uh, the two women held the DMP officers um, at gunpoint because wow. obviously they were trying to get into the back room to find the printing material. And um, so the women held them at gunpoint, you know. That's great. And I, just, I just thought it was so exciting. Yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, and most people don't believe it when they see that scene. They go, oh, no, it's a great scene, but, you know, that wouldn't have happened. And I'm like, it, it did, did happen, it's you know? True. It's true. Yeah. And we don't know it. Yeah. Um, so I thought I'll I'll try to write that as succinctly as I possibly can and find decent locations and I'll stick my granny into it. Great. So yeah. I just inserted her into the story. So, yeah, she comes into the shop and she picks up the potatoes in front of the policeman and, and walks out with them. Mm-hmm. So that was that was my cameo. And that was yeah. my granny, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but so that's a that's why you know I just thought oh, people should know this story. Yeah, they should. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And um, so next for you, you're what are you doing now? You're working away. You're always working away. Yeah. Well, actually, before I shot Proclaim, I shot 15 pages of this low budget feature that I've written, mm-hmm. and um, actually I've co-written. I should say co-written with mm-hmm. Carl Argue. Oh, yeah. And um, he was supposed to play the other part, but I think he's he had to get work or whatever, so he he can't play that part now. So mm-hmm. it's me. I'm playing against Danny Mahoney, mm-hmm. who's also in Proclaim. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I shot 15 pages of it already. It was just in my sitting room, so that was fine. I didn't have to move, so it was grand. I could get loads done, mm-hmm. you know. And um, so we're shooting now on Saturday. Mm-hmm. We're doing um, a cafe scene, just conversation between me and Danny. Um, and we're just two down out actors so it's a little bit like with Neil and I tiny bit you know yeah. <laughs> and uh, both completely 
bullshitting each other and telling each other that our lives are great and that the audition that went really really badly went really really well okay we're like yeah, yeah it's amazing it went amazing yeah, yeah. how do yours goes oh it's amazing <laughs> yeah i think i'll get it oh do you yeah, yeah. yeah okay well uh, that would be good for you if you got it you know totally yeah. <laughs> hoping the other person doesn't, doesn't get, get it, it you know yeah. i mean it's just typical of actors so i was trying to get that across you know mm-hmm. um and they're both like in a you know cafe and they're they have these coffee cups but they're both drinking tap water because they can't afford like a coffee like you know it's just (laughs) and then anyway to get away from Dublin because it's uh, driving them crazy Mm -hmm. they both um leg it down the country to go camping yeah um and then stuff goes wrong and Oh, it's hell just, freaks yeah, 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 exactly. It sounds fun. I, I'm, I'd be really looking forward to this to see that now. And um, you're definitely an actor then that goes out and makes work for herself. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Um, would you? That would be full on advice that you would give actors for actors listening. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> you're very lucky if you live in Ireland and you get regular work. I mean, because it's so small, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I mean, I, I think obviously Irish actors are incredibly talented, but I think an awful lot of it, like anywhere in L.A. and London, is who you know. Of course. And the thing is, if you're one of those people that can put your energy there into networking and into getting to pe- you know, people to know you and stuff, then great. But if you're not, if you're just a creative person that just wants to make stuff yeah. and you forget about that, which is kind of like me, then just go out and make your own stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and then you'll eventually, you know, you'll be happy making stuff in any case. Yeah, because the experience is the same regardless. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. You did a crowdfunding scheme, though. For, I did, for yes. Being. What was that yeah. like? That was my first one, actually. Was and it? Um, it was a bit crazy. So I'd shot the film and then I just wanted to do, um, you know, polish the sound and get a grade on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did an Indiegogo campaign that was 15 days long. <sighs> Just, just bananas when you think about yeah. it and I was asking for 2,000 euro so that's 1,000 euro a week mm. essentially because mm-hmm. it's kind of two weeks 15 days and um, I thought oh, I won't get this but I'm, <laughs> I might get like 500 euro or something you know mm-hmm. I end up making 2,836 euro or something wow. so uh, yeah so I was kind of bowled over by that and people's generosity and stuff because as I say I don't think I'm a person that kind of networks very well or kind of yeah. you know that type of thing mm-hmm. but then I kind of realized that because I've been making my own stuff and you know, you know for years and actually knew loads of people so in a way I'd accidentally networked you know that way yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd just gone and done my own thing kept myself happy and because of that you know people get to know you and mm-hmm. you know and then they want to help you out then as well so that was really lovely yeah really lovely so I think that's a really good point you know, when people are listening because I think there's a lot of people that feel really anxious about yeah. the whole word networking I'm always talking I know I just hate it yeah and ultimately like what does it mean it probably just means you know being friendly and talking to people yeah yeah I know Uh, and when we say it like that then we're totally able to do it yeah exactly when when you say networking it just has a different feeling yeah it does it It has like a ruthlessness attached to it or something and you're like get out there and get yeah yeah just use people and he's like abuse them and like no I can't do (laughs) it I can't do it (laughs) yeah I can't do it yeah Um, have you any um advice for actors starting off or what, what what would you have loved to know say 10 years ago um oh god 10 years I don't uh, I think I think definitely make your own stuff mm-hmm. um stay true to yourself um it sounds really hammy but it's kind of no, it is kind of true, true. Yeah. um what, like what would I have said to myself I think just be more confident like you know I, because I, I, you know, I have a tendency to kind of be shy and be very self-critical as well. Mm-hmm. I think just go easier on yourself because it's, it's really hard and it's basically down to luck. Yeah. You know, so you could beat yourself up for not getting an, um, an audition that you, th- you know, you know, it probably went really well, but, um, having directed now, I know it's not really to do with having a great audition. Mm-hmm. It's to do with, are they right for the part and stuff? So, you know, if you don't get it don't beat yourself up I used to kind of cry and be so upset yeah. afterwards um and now I'm kind of going god I'm such an idiot yeah you know mm-hmm. um try to let it go I suppose if yeah. you don't get stuff and just keep going yeah you've actually touched on a really interesting point because like you're obviously auditioning people for the role yeah uh, as opposed to auditioning yourself what yeah. was that like what did you notice with actors coming into rooms and stuff oh yeah well I suppose definitely um always always be positive when you come in always have a big smile always say you love the script um never kind of go 
yeah, I didn't really understand this back because oh. because you should figure it out before you get in there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and the thing is, I've made those mistakes going mm-hmm. in, so now I realize, God, what was I thinking? Yeah. Why was I going in, you know, saying this stuff? Because it comes across so negative, mm-hmm. you know. And you might not mean it like that, but um, like I mean, there was an actor on this. I remember when he first came in, and I cast him. I end up casting, but that that's because I'm an actor, and I yeah, kind of know he where he was coming from, and he was kind of just nervous. And he kind of said, "I said, so do you like the script?" He goes, "Yeah." Well, I like this scene, and then he just stopped. And me and the other guy, because I had some uh, helping me, I, we just kind of nod our heads and just looked at each other. <laughs> I was oh. like, "Okay, so shall we read the script?" You know, it was just. So you only liked that scene, did you? And he didn't. He liked the whole thing. He's just nervous. Yeah. And it just came out like that. So it kind of comes off as a defensiveness, you know. And mm-hmm. um, uh, and now I know he he he, he, he loves it and yeah. stuff. Uh, but I got him to do a good read or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. and, and got him to relax and stuff. And I was like, no, he, there's a good actor under there and, a, you know, nice person. They've just kind of screwed up the audition a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, so big <laughs> smile, go in, read the script, know everything. Yeah, yeah, just, just be really positive. positive. Just be really yeah. positive. Yeah. And to know ultimately it's just about the right person. It's, yeah, job. yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's really interesting. I'd say there's a lot of people kind of going, oh, but I didn't get this and I saw somebody casting and they look exactly like me and I could have oh, done yeah, it. Oh yeah, no, you know? God, it's so, it's it's not just do how you look, it's something to do with energy. Like yeah. it's, because in a way you kind of want to cast the person who is closest to the part, if not the part, yeah. you know that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so the guy who plays Connolly in in Proclaim, there was something about him that was really gentle, simultaneously really gentle, and then really I could get him to be kind of quite gruff. Because I, I was uh, talking to him on second, going, now you have to be really gruff and really gentle, okay? <laughs> and I was like, because this is one of the biggest socialists of our time. That means he loves people, right? He's like, yeah, okay. I said, because I, I was trying to get the balance right, because sometimes he'd be too gruff and sometimes, you know, be too mm-hmm. gentle. And I was like, I want both. <laughs> but I remember in the audition seeing that from him. And so it was a very special kind of a quality and a kind of special personality. Mm-hmm. And um, other people that came in just didn't have that. But they were very good actors. Yeah. But it comes across on screen great, you know. So I was delighted with his person, uh, with his performance. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's your go-to, I suppose, as an actor? Um, do you do you see yourself as like a method actor, or how? What? How do you go about getting ready for a part then? Um, well, I wouldn't call myself method, uh, but I would definitely like write a backstory. Um. I quite like it, but lots of directors don't do this where they would um, uh, kind of, uh, what do you call it, like um, hot spot or basically you sit in a chair and the person asks you questions in character. Right. So that way you get to explore the backstory you've already written and stuff like that. And then maybe improv with the other actors mm-hmm. um, to do with scenes that n- aren't necessarily in the film or in the play yeah. that are just kind of to do with your past or something. Uh-huh. So it builds up a, uh, a re- um, kind of an imaginative relationship but it kind of begins to exist Mm -hmm. you know and it just creates a kind of a tension then when you go into the actual scene to film it or the actual scene on on the stage it creates something else there's something behind it there's a past basically yeah and um so I I definitely do those things Mm -hmm. um but I don't stay in character when Mm -hmm. I go to get a cup of tea like you know or whatever um I read the script about a million times like yeah. a million times. I know my lines inside and out. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you don't, you can really hear it. You can, yeah. That the person doesn't own the lines, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And so you have to do 100 takes then just because the person doesn't know their lines well enough. And they think, well, I know them because I'm saying them right, haven't I? Yeah. But they have to be kind of go right into you. It's like you have to, di- you know, digest your lines. And then they just fall out mm-hmm. rather than you pushing them out, you know. Yeah, or searching for them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You do always see it in people's eyes, I always think. when, it's Particularly like if you're doing like a duologue. And yeah. you're just recording, you see it, their little eye kind of roaming around. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like, the, like they're searching their brain. Where's that line again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come back <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, it kind of gets me because every actor wants to do a great performance. And you're like, yeah, well then... Then go do your work beforehand. Yeah. But then they'll be so happy to get a part. And then you kind of see people and they just don't. And you go, have you, have you learned your lines yet? It's like, no, no, I'll do that next week. And, it's and self-sabotage. It's mad. Though, it? It's self-sabotage. Total. It's actors all over. Yeah. I think they just, 
because then they can always turn around and say oh I didn't get the part but I didn't I, get it because yeah. I didn't really try yeah I didn't try know? that hard yeah so, yeah exactly as opposed to giving it all and then maybe getting the part or you can at least turn around and say oh well I didn't try so it's you know yeah yeah <laughs> it's silly though when you it's think crazy it. like you know yeah. Um, we always kind of finish up on uh, one small little note and that Pleasure. is um, what was like the best piece of advice that you have ever received in your life um, oh my god I, I don't know, know. <laughs> um, I think can I can I use bad language of course you can fuck them that is brilliant that mm-hmm. comes to me all the time when I'm shooting something when I'm doing when I'm anything yeah you got kind of really gather yourself in and just kind of go this is what because because you have so many people coming at you like mm-hmm. you know telling you you shouldn't be doing this because you need you, you, you need to buy a house you need to settle down you need to have children you need to do this you know mm-hmm. all these types of things um and then when you're on set an awful lot of the time like as a director I find sometimes like I can be questioned an awful lot and I've, I've talked about this already I told you what I wanted why don't you get the shot that I want and, you know yeah. and but you know you, you don't want to lose a temper or anything like this like I'm not saying anything like that but in your mind mm-hmm. to kind of guard yourself yeah and to keep going just go fuck them yeah that and that was given to me by Mark Rylance right. uh, so he was a, a former uh, Rada grad mm-hmm. and so he came back uh, to Rada to give us a workshop and it's something that he says to himself all the time and he just goes, fuck. And I think it really does help. Genuinely, it does help me. I'll be using that forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mo, thanks a million for coming in. Oh, no, thank you so much for asking me. Thanks a million.